Hey everyone, how's it going? You all keeping well, ready for the Coda Dojo? Hey, how's it going, Chazza? How's it going, Blake? I have a different cat with me today. This is Banshee. And she does not like being held as much as Jin does. Hello, Falcon Fab Lab. Hello, Jamie. Oh, no, you don't. All my cats want to be in the streams. Who else do we have here? Hello, Treasure Cow. Hope you're all keeping well today. So today, we're going to make, I always call them cookie clickers, but they're just clicker games. Down we go, kitten. No, no, no. So I've made a taco clicking game. And this is going to be interesting. So once we have more than 100 tacos, we can summon from the shop a taco wizard who will summon one additional taco every second. So this is kind of how all cookie clicker games work. I always call them cookie clickers, but they're just like clicker games. You can, there's actually a few quite fun ones online. There's shark clicker, which is actually pretty good. And there's paper clipper. That one's actually really fun. So in today's Coda Dojo, we're gonna learn about variables, we're going to learn about a lot of if-then statements. You're also going to learn a lot of useful stuff like orbiting. So this cool orbit effect where the taco wizards are going around. All righty, Charles. I'm glad that you're yeeting, but any more, <laughs> and that will count as spamming. And then I'll time you out for 30 seconds. We don't want that. But yeah, I hope you, I'm glad you guys are all with me. We can uh, do some coding together. Um, so just while we wait, because we'll just give a few more minutes for everyone to arrive. There's a few people who are always coming by a little bit later. I'm just going to go through some kind of uh, uh, ground rules. Um, so... Or not even ground rules, just some, just some things to bear in mind. I'm very well, Treasure Cow. How are you going? All right. So just a few rules in the chat. No swearing, otherwise I will hide your comment. Uh, no spamming, so not just like, just like saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. So if you spam, I'll, I'll time you out um, for 30 seconds. If you keep doing it, we had someone on Thursday who just kept spamming, and I was like, well, I'll just time you out for today. So, and I don't want to do that, so just don't spam. The chat's there so that we can all talk to each other. And that's kind of, if you just spam, then it kind of like ruins the chat. Let's get some more taco wizards. Uh, uh, nice. Okay, uh, let's see. The other thing is, if you can right now, set up with two screens. So, hey, AJ, how's it going? Lovely to have you here. So if you can set up with two screens, one with my um, stream on it um, and one with your project on it so that you can code along with me and you're not having to flick backwards and forwards, that'll make things a bit easier for you. Uh, very good, let's get some more taco wizards. Huh. And another one. I like to time these so that they all kind of form a nice little circle. All right, uh, you'd like the taco to move, Blake? Well, in your taco clicking game, or whatever clicker game you want to make, you can make the taco move if you want. Okay, so use the online version of Scratch if possible. Um, so the reason that I say that is because what you'll be able to do is if you're having problems with your code, you'll be able to post your, you'll be able to share your project to me, 
and I'll be able to see your code. Because through chat, it's going to be a little bit difficult if you say, my code's not working. And I'm like, well, I don't know why it's not working. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. If you can use the online version of Scratch, that will be better. Um, or even if you're not using the online version of Scratch, um, upload your project to the online version of Scratch um, when you need to share it with me. All right. Um, so uh, I've mentioned about the spamming. We've given everyone about five minutes. I'll give everyone a few more minutes just to sort that out if you can. So with the two screens, if you have like literally two screens on your computer, that's great, but not everyone has that. Um, if you can have, um, otherwise you can just have two tabs like I have here, like I have a blank scratch one and I have my taco game and you can just flick between them like this. That is fine. Um, other options are you could put um, my stream on a TV or an iPad and have it next to you and have your laptop there so you can do the coding and look at what I'm doing. Um, as I said, it's not a big deal if you absolutely can't um, have two screens. It just makes things a bit easier if that's possible for you. All right, let's see if we can get this full nice circle going with these taco wizards. While well, we're just waiting for everyone to arrive All right. Yep, that's fine. You can uh, so just to, just to refresh you, what spamming is is if you type the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so there's like that kind of like. Uh, so if you're asking, can we chat now? Um, Yes, you can chat. You can chat throughout this. Um, one thing I should mention is that there's about a 20, 30 second delay between what I broadcast, what I'm live streaming, and you receiving it. So when you ask me a question in chat, I'll immediately give an answer uh, once I see it. Um, but you won't get that answer until like 20, 30 seconds later. So it might seem like I'm ignoring you, but I'm not. It's just a delay. Um, so don't stress if something's not quite working. Just try and keep up with the tutorial today. Um, and at the end, we've got plenty of time because we're going to finish this up around about um, uh, 4.30. It's about 3.37 now. So 4.30, that's when I'll be like, yep, we're done. And then we'll basically have some time to chat. We'll go on to Scratch Online and organize some stuff like getting people onto the Futures Lab studio, liking each other's projects. If you guys have problems, you can publish your project and share it with me and I can then go, oh yeah, I see what the problem is. This variable here needs fixing, that kind of thing. All right, that's all good. Okay, well, hopefully you won't be confused uh, once we start playing, Charles, once you start doing the, um, uh, the tutorial. That should be good. All right. I think we've got a good number of people. Let's get some more taco wizards. There we go. So the way that these games normally work is you have one point. Uh, you have different uh, currencies of points, different variables that control points. So in the cookie click game, it was cookies. And each time you click on, the, click on the cookie, you make another cookie. In my game, it's tacos. So each time you click on the taco, you make another taco. And then what you can do is you can summon um, various things. In my game, it's taco wizards. In the cookie clicker game, it was like grandmas who would make more cookies every second. And it sounds silly, but some of these games can actually be kind of interesting because they can get more and more complex. Because once you have the grandmas, then you can have something that makes you more grandmas. Then you can have something that makes more of the thing that makes more grandmas. Then you can have something that makes more of that thing. And then you can get more and more complex systems. Um, we aren't gonna go too deep, but you can see how you could take this deeper. All right, so let's take this away and let's make a start. All right, is everyone ready to code? Type into chat. Excellent. Nice to have you here, AJ. All right, let us begin. Okay, so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to make two sprites. 
Um, now, if you're not sure how this is going to go, just use the same sprites that I'm using. Um, otherwise, if you want to be a bit creative, you can use different sprites. Um, so just for anyone who hasn't used the online version of Scratch before, what you do is you go to Google, you type in Scratch, you click on the first thing that comes up, which is Scratch Imagine Program Share. That takes you through to the Scratch web page. And then you click on Create here. And that will take you to where you can make a new project. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to delete this, this cat sprite here, this little um, uh, bin with a cross on it there. And now that sprite is gone. What I'll do as well is I'll move myself across to here and I'll get rid of this. Yep, that's good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I hope, Blake, I hope that magpie leaves you alone. <laughs> All right, so uh, to make new sprites, there's a few different ways of doing this. We're gonna choose the easiest way today. So you hover over this little uh, cat symbol here and you can either click on the cat face or go up to the magnifying glass to choose a sprite. Um, you can do a search for food up here if you want. I'm gonna go with a taco. Now for my taco wizards, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to choose a sprite, go to food and get a second taco. But, um, what I'm going to do now is this one's called Taco 2. Uh, so I'm going to rename this sprite here where it says Taco 2. Right there. And call this Taco Wizard. All righty. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Costumes right up here in the top left corner and I'm gonna come down and select Taco Wizard. There we go. All right. Um, then we're gonna go back to code up in the top left corner and we're gonna choose a background. Um, your background can be anything that you like. Um, in the bottom right corner where it says choose a backdrop, click on that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to click on Outdoors and I'm going to choose this one here, Urban. I like this one. Kind of gives me sort of a cafe vibe here. All right, so what we first need to do is we need to code our taco clicking to work. And this is very simple. Um, what we need to do is we need to go across to, on the left side, all these colored categories for different types of code. We're going to click on events, the sort of yellowy one, and we're going to get when this sprite clicked. This is super nice and easy. And we're going to drag that out and drop it here. I'm going to try and make this a bit bigger so it should be easier for you guys to see. Okay, um, what we need now, all right, no problems, Charles, I'll slow down a little bit. What we need now is we need to make a new variable. So to get a new variable, we're going to go across to the left-hand side with this sort of dark orange category here, variables. All right, and we need to make a new variable. This make a variable button right here. Click on that. Okay, so we're gonna give our variable a name. I'm gonna call it tacos. And we need to make sure that for all sprites is selected not for this sprite only, okay? The one on the left. I'm gonna press okay. 
that's good. All right, so we've now got a variable here, tacos. Um, so variables um, are basically magical boxes that hold a piece of information called data. And that data can be a number, it could be a word or series of words, it could be all sorts of things. But our variable tacos is going to contain a number, which is the number of tacos we've made in the game. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change my variable, uh, the taco variable by one. So change, and then it might say my variable by one. We don't want set my variable, we want change my variable. And then once we've got that out, we need to make sure that instead of saying my variable, we click this little white triangle and select tacos. Okay, let's see if that works, all right? If I click this taco, yeah, the number goes up. That's good. All right, cool. If everyone's got that sorted. Now, that's not very satisfying. Clicking on the taco, all we see is this number slightly change. Let's do something nice and simple that makes that feel a bit more satisfying. Let's go to looks. Over on the left-hand side, the purple category. Let's set size to 100% and put that there. And then let's go across to, actually let's get another set size to 100%. Absolutely, uh, you can delete my variable if you want. If you're in the variables, you can right click here, my variable to delete if you want to get rid of it. All right, so we've got when this sprite clicked, change tacos by one, set size to 100%, set size to 100%, let's add one more thing. Let's go across to the yellow events category. Uh, actually, control, although we could see it before as well. We want wait one second. Let's grab that and put that in between the two set sizes. Okay, um, so let's set size, the second size to 90. Um, so, and then let's change this weight to 0 0.1 seconds. So we want one tenth of a second. Okay, so let's see what, that lo what this looks like. Okay, let's try making the weight even smaller. Let's change this to 0 0.05 seconds. Ah, oh, that's much better. That looks like a really nice button press there. So these are the two sizes that your taco will be. The first is the size that it becomes when you click on it. The second is the size that it goes back to after, afterwards. So I've got it starting off at 100% and then going down to 90%. You can instead have it start at 90% and go down to 80% if you want. Or it could start at 110% and go down to 100% depending how big you want your taco to be. But make sure you leave yourself enough space for all the taco wizards to circle around, okay? All right, that's good. Okay, so we've got our taco um, working, our main gameplay loop. What we need now is that when we start the game, the tacos go back to zero. Um, so, whoa, no we don't, kitten. I know you want to be on the stream, but not right now. All right. So what we need 
is we need a different event. We need an event when this game starts, which is the event that we need for that. Write it in the chat. I'll give you a few seconds to answer. Alrighty. I hope you got your guesses in because I'm going to tell you it's in events and it's when green flag clicked. That's what happens when our game starts. All right. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set our tacos to zero. So we go to variables. We get set tacos to zero. And now when we hit the green flag to start the game, the tacos go back to zero. So this is something that you have to remember. If you make a, a new uh, variable like HP or gold, that needs to reset back um, to a particular number when the game starts. You've got to remember uh, to make sure that when the green flag clicked, all of your variables go back to where they should start the game at. All righty. So that's good. Um, let's set up our taco wizard. So this taco wizard's a bit big. I'm going to make the taco wizard a little smaller. Um, so to do that nice and easily, you can just click on the taco wizard in the bottom right corner there. And you can click on size just here where I'm wiggling my mouse. And I'm going to set that to 50. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. That looks pretty good. So what we need to do now is we need to do um, first let's get the code working and then we'll get the orbiting tiny taco wizards who orbit our giant mega taco. All right. Um, so now we need to be able to click on this taco wizard. So we go back to events. We get another when this sprite clicked. Make that a bit bigger so it's easier for you guys to see. All righty. So, and let's create some clones. So, to create clones, um, we go to control, the sort of orangey um, category on the left. And we get create clone of myself. So if you want to change the sprite um, without deleting the code, um, what you need to do is you go to the sprite that you want to change. So you select it. And then you go up to costumes in the top left corner where I'm wiggling my mouse here. And then you go to choose a costume here. And there we go. It adds it into the list of the, the costumes. And then you just click on the one you want it to be. OK? So that's how you do it. That's how you change your costume without uh, losing the code to answer your question. OK. So we've got our code. When this sprite clicked, create a clone of myself. Now, we haven't told the clones what they need to do yet. Um, so we won't. So when we click the this, nothing, nothing will happen because 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 the clones haven't been given any instructions yet. That's okay. We're coming back to that later. Let's uh, do some more stuff with variables for the time being. Um, let's go to the left side. We go to the orangey variables um, section. And let's make a new variable. And let's call this one taco wizards. Nope. Ah. 
Well, all my cats are attention seekers, apparently. Taco wizards. Make sure that for all sprites is selected. And we should have our second variable, taco wizards. Good. Um, let's change taco wizards by one. And let's also create a piece of code that makes our tacos tick up by one every second for each taco wizard we have. All right, so to do that, we need to go to events. We need to go uh, when the green flag clicked. And then we need to go down to get a forever from the control category, put that in there. Then we need to get a wait one second and put it inside the forever. Then what we need to do is we need to go back to variables. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a change variable by something. And we don't wanna change taco wizards. We click on this white triangle and we wanna change tacos. Now, to make it so that this number is however many taco wizards we have, what you can do is you can go across to the left side, grab taco wizards, this little round one here, and drag it over. And can you see that this is kind of made to fit inside there? If you put the left side of it right over the white slot and let go, there we go. So now, every second that the game is playing, it will change the number of tacos we have by the number of taco wizards we have. So if we have four taco wizards, it will add four to the number of tacos um, that we have. Uh, let's, let's test that, shall we? So click to make a few taco wizards, and then start the game, and are your tacos going up? Looks like they are. That's good. All right, so currently we can just buy Taco Wizards for free. We'll fix that later. All righty. Um, what I'll do is I will share this project And I will copy paste the um, code, uh, <laughs> the link, sorry, into the chat. Um, so you can have a look at my project um, and you can kind of see uh, where your brother got went wrong. Um, okay. So yeah, should be okay. All right. And at the end of the session, in about half an hour, then if you're still having problems, then you can publish the project and I can help you with it. I'll be like, ah, oh, I see where you went wrong. That's what you need to fix. Okay. So we've got all this code. Let's make our taco wizards appear when they are clones and let's make them nicely just go around this taco. Okay. So what we will do is we will go to control on the left side. We will grab a when I start as clone line. There we go, when I start as clone. And then what we will do is we will get, we will go to motion, the dark blue section on the left. We will get a go to random position. We, want, we don't want them to go to a random position, so click this white triangle here. We want them to go to the taco. So, let's see what happens now when we click on taco wizards. Okay, so it's making clones on top of the taco, but they're not moving. 
And there are also, right on top of the taco, so let's make it so that they are going around the taco. So let's go, they're staying in motion. Let's make them move up. Let's, so we're gonna grab change Y. Now to make them move up, are we going to give a plus number or a minus number? So it's either gonna be 100 or minus 100. Which direction will make them go up above the taco? Make your guesses now in the chat. I'll give you a few seconds to get that in. By the way, if ever I'm looking left, it's because I've got my second monitor on the left here and I'm looking at your chat so that I can answer the questions that you're asking me and that kind of thing. All right. And the answer is it's going to be a plus number, 100. It's gonna, gonna take the taco up by 100. Yes, got that right, very good. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to make them circle around the taco. Um, so we need another forever loop. So let's go to control, grab a forever loop. Let's get motion and move. Let's make this one step instead of 10 steps. So instead of move 10 steps, we'll move one steps. No problems, Blake, I'll slow down a little bit. You should be able to see all the code there. So if you're missing anything, just grab everything from what you see in front of you. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a turn. Now let's grab, let's try the first turn. Now, I'm just gonna double check how many degrees it should be. Ah, let's do this a bit differently. So we want, let's get the different turn. So we want to make sure that we get the second turn. Yeah, we want the second turn. So it's the turn that is going round to the left, okay? And we want that to change by just one degree, okay? So we want to, you should be able to see on the screen which turn you need. It's the second turn in the two turns. And then we want to move by minus two steps, all right? Let's see if that works, shall we? Yeah, that works. Making lots of taco wizards. Now, these taco wizards are a bit small. So I'm going to, sorry, a bit, a bit too big. I want to make them smaller. But I don't want the original taco wizard to be smaller. So where should we put the line of code to make them smaller? Should we put it here? Or should we put it here? So on the right, underneath the green flag, or on the left, when I start as clone. I'll give you guys a few seconds to answer in the chat. Okay, and the answer is, it needs to happen underneath when I start as clone, this code on the left. Good, so we want to set the size to, let's try 30%. We get that from looks, set size to 30%. We don't want change size, that will do something quite different. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. 
Hey, that's looking pretty good. All right. So we've got our taco wizard spawning. We've got our taco wizards um, orbiting around our original taco. What we'll do now is we'll make it so that we can only buy the taco wizards if we have enough tacos to spend. Um, so first of all, we're gonna do some graphics stuff, okay? Um, this stuff is not necessary for your game to work, but it does make it easier for other people who don't know how your game works to see how they're meant to play it. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna make a little uh, brown sprite and just call it shop. No kitten. <sighs> this is not a cat stream. We deleted the scratch cat. All right. Okay. So uh, let's paint a sprite. So we go to the bottom right corner. Uh, we hover over the cat face. No, not you, Banshee. And no. And then we go over the paint sprite. And we click paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a brown box. So I'm gonna click on rectangle here. I'm gonna change the color to be a sort of brown. Your shop can be whatever like your sort of shop can be whatever color you like. Yeah, that that's fine. I'm just gonna draw a box like this. So we just got a nice brown box. That's all we need to draw in the draw new sprite section. And then what we need to do is we just need to uh, put some text into our sprite, just shop. <laughs> Banshee doesn't mind. Okay. So let's click on text now. We're still in our painting sprite. Let's go for a nice black. You can choose whatever colors you like. I'm just gonna type in shop. And once you click away, if you're careful, you can move this around. It doesn't need to look perfect. That looks fine. Okay, then I'm just gonna move this over here and a nice little fast trick to get certain sprites to be on top of each other. Now that I've moved the shop over the taco wizard, I can grab the taco wizard by the cape, just where I've got my mouse, and now the taco wizard goes on top. Okay, so now that we've got the taco wizard, I'll give you guys just a, just a second to make sure that you're um, up to date with your little shop sprites. And you don't necessarily need a shop sprite, I just think it looks nice. Um, what we need to do now is we click on the taco wizard. And once we've clicked on the taco wizard, we need to go to costumes up in the top left. So I've got three costumes. I've, and you probably will only have two, or you, depending on which sprite you've chosen. So I only want the taco wizard costume. So I'm gonna click on this taco costume and press the delete button here. I'm gonna click on the apple costume and press the delete button here. Okay, so now we've got the taco wizard costume. And now what we're gonna do, and follow this closely, we're gonna duplicate um, the taco wizard costume. So I'm gonna right click, so that's this one here. And then I'm gonna normal click where it says duplicate. And we should now have two 
Tarko Wizard costumes. Now, I'm going to name the second Tarko Wizard costume to Tarko Wizard Shop. Okay? All right. And then I'm going to get text. Just pop it here. And just say, 100 tacos. And once you click away from the text, if you're very careful, you can grab the corner and just make that a bit bigger. Good. All right, so now in the bottom right corner, we've got a nice shop and our taco wizard, which is 100 tacos. So it's important that we have our taco wizard um, with the 100 tacos costume. And it's also important that uh, we have our taco wizard costume without that as well. Okay? So make sure that we've selected the costume that's got the 100 tacos on it. Um, and then we're going to go back to the code. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that all our Taco Wizard clones don't have this annoying 100 tacos on them. So, what line of code shall I use underneath when I start as clone to make that happen? I'll give you, I'll give you a few seconds to write that in chat. What line of code are we going to use to make sure that the costume is the correct one? Alrighty, I hope you've gotten your guesses in because the answer is in looks, the purple uh, category up in the top left, we're going to get switch costume two. We're going to put it right underneath when I start as a clone. And we're going to switch costume to just Taco Wizard. We don't want it to say Taco Wizard Shop. Okay? So when I start as clone, switch costume to Taco Wizard. All righty. So let's give that a go. Oh, wrong thing. There we go. Nice. That's good. So we're able to click on this taco wizard in the shop right here. And we're able to uh, click on, uh, and when it creates all the taco wizards who circle around the taco, they don't have this 100 tacos written on them. All right, so now we need to make it true that you need to spend 100 tacos to buy a taco wizard, okay? So let's click back on the taco wizard in our sprites just here. And let's uh, go to the code of our taco wizard. We are going to need to put in an if statement. If... Uh, is in events, I think. No, it's in control. I always get events and control confused. You'll probably notice this, the more of these that we do. They're even a similar color. Um, so we go to control and we get an if. We grab out this if. Let's just put it here by itself for now. We're going to put it where it needs to go in a second. So the question that we need to ask is first, do we have enough tacos? to buy this taco wizard. So to do to ask that question, we're going to need to go to operators. Let's grab operators and what we need is a more than block. Alrighty, now put in the symbol for more than. One of these two is more than, and one of them is less than. We need more than. Which one is more than? 
And if you get this right, it's going to be good because this is stuff that you'll probably be doing way later when you're doing like, like algebra and maths and that kind of thing, which you're probably not doing just yet. So kudos to you for get this right. All righty. I'll give you a few seconds. And the symbol for more than is this one. It's the arrow that's pointing towards the right, towards what's currently 50, okay? So you can see this here. Yes, got it right. Um, we're gonna put that inside the if statement here. So what we need to do now is we need to go to variables and we need to ask the question if you have more than 100 tacos. So get uh, tacos here. Now here's an interesting thing. What are we gonna put here? What are we gonna type in here? I'll give you a few seconds to answer because this might be a slight trick question. The answer is not 100, it's gonna be 99 because we want it to be a hundred or more. If you went into a shop and they said this costs a hundred tacos, as you would, as of course all shops accept tacos as currency, and if they don't, they should, right? So if you went into a shop and said, I would like to purchase this taco wizard for a hundred tacos, and the shopkeeper says, no, you don't have enough tacos, you need at least 101 tacos, because more than means at least one more than, so we need to have this as 99, and that will then equal 100 or more. Does that make sense? All right. So if your tacos are more than 99 tacos, so 100 or more, then we need to take away those tacos because you just paid them for the taco wizard, right? So let's grab a change variable by, and we need to change this variable to tacos. Change tacos by minus 100. But then what do you get in exchange for your 100 tacos being given to this shopkeeper taco wizard? You get a taco wizard. So we need to grab change taco wizards by one, okay? So, what we need now is this will happen every time we click the taco wizard button, right? And it needs to ask this question before it does any of the taco wizard stuff. So, in fact, let's grab this here, the create clone of myself and change taco wizards by one. Let's put it inside here, and you can see that I've accidentally got two of these. I only need one of them, so let's get one of them and throw them away. And let's get this whole thing and connect that up to when this sprite clicked. So this is the code that you should have. When this sprite clicked, if tacos more than 99, then change tacos by minus 100, change taco wizards by one, and create clone of myself. Alrighty. Okay, all right, so treasure cow, we're, we're nearly at the end. Um, so in the meantime, if you want, I'll just post my link again. <laughs> Rune Wiz, you'd you would you would you would pay 70, 70 tacos for a taco wizard tops? Well, you can change that in your game if you like. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I like that. Um so I've just posted my link again for you, Treasure Cow. So you can have a bit of a look and see my project and compare it to yours. Um in the meantime, um what I'll try and do is, um, so if you want to do the same thing for me, then what you need to do is you need to click on share here, if you can, you might not be able to. And then 
what you need to do is once you end up like in this page here, you click once up here, and we need to copy that. So just right click, just this one here, right click with all, all this blue, blue text here, and then just normal click on copy, and then just go into the chat, and you can paste by right clicking again, like let's say I wanted to paste it here, and you could go paste, and then press enter, and then I'll be able to see your project, and I'll be able to have a look and, and, and see where you're going wrong, okay? All right, so let's stop this and start again. Now, what do we need to do to our taco wizards variable? Every time I start the game, how many taco wizards do I have? That was my mouse. That's not the kind of mouse you're meant to go for, Kitty. All right, make your guesses. What do we need to do to our taco wizards variable when the game starts? We need to set it to zero. So when the game starts is when green flag clicked. So there should be some code somewhere in your taco wizard code. It should be like three blocks of code and one of them should start with when green flag clicked. And we need to set taco wizards to zero. So now this code here in your taco wizards sprite should read when green flag clicked, set taco wizards to zero, forever wait one second, change tacos by taco wizards. All righty. So now let's see what happens. Let's see if it works properly now. So we hit go. And that's good. We've got zero tacos and zero taco wizards. I'll make this big. Let's see if I can get up to 100 tacos nice and quick. And taco wizard. And now you can see this taco wizard is making me one taco every second. And there we go. That's pretty much everything. So if you wanted, I don't know if you've played like a clicker game before, um, but as I was saying before, what we could have, for example, is like a taco wizard, uh, I don't know, a taco high wizard, and he makes taco wizards. And then you could have like a taco academy, which makes a, more taco high wizards, and they make more taco wizards, which make more tacos. You could just keep going. You can have more and more um, series of, uh, what's a good, uh, production engines, basically. These, uh, these more and more series of variables of a thing that make another thing that ultimately make you more tacos. And then like your tacos can just be going up by some ridiculous amount. All right. So we've learned um, how we can use variables to do things like, so for example, this code that I've taught you today, if you wanted to make like a Zelda game or like a shooting game with a, like a shop and you could buy upgrades, you've now seen all the code that you need in order to make a shop because this is basically a fully functional shop. Um, if you want to make a game that's like a, an empire building game, um, which generates resources over time, um, I don't know if you guys have played or seen like StarCraft um, or what are the, there's a lot of them on like, um, uh, there's a lot of these games on like, um, like idle games on like phones. Um, and again, resources are ticking up slowly over time. If you have, you know, more wizards, they generate you more magic. If you have more 
uh, mine to generate you more metal. So you've seen how you could make a game like that using this code. Um, and you've also seen how to do this nice orbit code. So if you wanted to do like maps of like um, planets, you could do that. Um, and this could be really useful in certain games as well, just having things that just slowly go around other things. Um, so this is a good time for us to uh, have a look at each other's um, projects. So if you're using the Scratch Online version, come up to here and press shared, uh, share, sorry. And what you should be able to do now, ah, so if you try and put links, so, ah, so um, what you should be able to do is once you click share here, where my mouse is, it should take you through to a page that looks a bit like this. And this is your project page, right? And then what you need to do is you need to copy paste um, your project code, uh, your, 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 uh, the website, which is up here, the scratch.mit.edu slash projects slash a really long number. Click on that once, anywhere on that um, bit of text, and it should all highlight blue. Right click, copy, then go and paste into chat, okay? So let, has anyone tried pasting their project um, web page into chat yet? Because I want to see, see if it works. Because it's possible that chat won't let you post links to web pages in case they're not safe. But so yeah, so if anyone has tried already to post their, because I'd like to play your games. So if you can post uh, your Scratch project into chat now, I should be able to click on it and we can play it live on the stream right now. And if, you're, if, you're, if your um, project isn't working, even better. Um, post that into chat and I should be able to click on it and uh, be able to see inside and tell you how you can fix it. So, the other way that I can do this is I can try to look for you, but I'd really like you to paste your um, Scratch project into um, the chat. You did already, Blake? It didn't work? All right. It must be a thing that chat's doing to prevent you from doing it. All right, that's fine. I'm going to look for you on Scratch then, um, and I think Treasure Cow needs a bit of help as well. All right, let's, let's, have, a look for, let's have a look for Blake. Um, so... Okay, so, uh, let's have a look, and muffin clicker, here we go, okie dokie, so, you start the game, alright, I'm going to mute my computer so you don't have to suffer through that like I did. <laughs> All right, 200 muffins. Oh, Blake, you're trying to kill me? 200 muffins? Okay, fine. All right, we can do this. We can do this. We can get up to 200 muffins. So one thing that you could do as well is um, you could put cheat codes into your game that generate you tons and tons of muffins if you wanted. And that would be pretty similar. Yep, no problems. We'll spend once we've once we've finished. Um, oh, okay, two hundred muffins. Okay, I see this isn't working. All right, let's have a look in the code. All right, muffin boys set muffin boys to zero. Set muffin boys to zero. Set muffins to zero. Yep, that's all good. Let's have a look at our muffin boys. Yep. Uh, let's make your variables 
visible. When this sprite clicked, if Muffin Boys... Ah, uh, okay. All right, everyone. Have we seen, have we seen the problem? What do we, what the question, how, what does a, a muffin boy cost? What does a muffin boy cost? It costs 200 muffins. Does it cost 200 muffin boys? No, you don't have 200 muffin boys. So you need to change this here from if muffin boys more than 199 to if muffins more than 199. So go and, let's see, yeah, now it should work. And I think your muffin is orbiting enough. Yeah, that should be good. If you want your muffin to go around in a bit more of a straight way, then you need to grab all of this and just move it more into the middle like that. Okay, so just to recap, hopefully that looks like it's fixed everything. You need to make sure that when this sprite clicked, if muffins more than 199, not muffin boys, because you don't have any of those yet. All right, this is one of the easiest things to do is get the variables wrong. So um, yeah, all right, that's good. That one's fixed. You should be able to fix that. Um, all right, so let's have a look for Treasure Cow. Now, I think you might have told me. All right, let's have a look. Treasure Cow. All righty, I don't see you there. Oh, cool. We found Charles's, Charles's game. We'll come back to that, okay? Huh? Let's... Okay. Let's have a look for Treasure Cow. Is it two words? Well, one thing that you could try doing treasure cow. Not yet, Charles. You can yeet once, but don't do more than one yeet at a time. Um, okay, so one thing that you can do, who's following me? Okay, followers, view all. So Treasure Cow, if you're on the Scratch um, website now, um, do a search at the top for Pale Thorn, and you should find me. And you should be able to click on me somewhere. I mean, it's not showing me, I think, because obviously you can't click on. Yeah, I can't click on my, my own profile. Although maybe I can. Yeah, click on my face. You should see my face. Click on my face. And then once you get to there, you should be able to follow me. like that. You find a scratcher and then you can follow like that. Okay, I think I'm, oh yeah, here we go, infamous. I shall follow infamous. So I'm gonna click follow here. All right. Ooh have some messages. Oh, infamous. Yep, I have followed you, don't worry. Um, now, 
treasure cow might not be in at the moment. Oh yes, we need to go to Yo Yell Cake. I'm already following Yo Yell Cake, so that should be fine. All right, let's have a look at that project. Um, here you are, Yo Yell Cakes. Okay, good. Ooh, I like it. All right, let's have a look. See, cakes and donuts. Now, I hope you checked the same thing that um, I said for Blake. All right, so we start the game. The cake's working, that's good. All right, good, good, good. Okay. That seems fine. I don't see what's wrong. I think it's all working. So yeah, you might have fixed it already. Either way, well done, yo yo cake. That's perfect. That is fine. Yeah, cakes are ticking up by two. Yeah, cool. There we go. All right, all right, so. Inches one, all righty. Inches one. Ha ha, found you. All righty, let's. Inches follow, there we go. So, the other thing that you can do, yep, follow everyone, that's all good. So, the other thing is we've set up a studio. Um, the studio is called the Futures Lab Coda Dojo. Futures Lab is two different words and Coda Dojo is one word. So, if you do a search for Futures Lab Code a dojo, one word. <laughs> and then you go across to studios, just here. Ah, oh, good job. Well done, yo Yell Cake. Working together as a team. So, when you click on studios, you should see here. And we should have a bunch of games that um, we've made in here. And what I'll do is, if you follow, then I should be able to invite you as curators so you can add your games um, to this studio as well. So, now, if you post any games that are like not appropriate, they've got swearing in, I'll have to remove you as a curator. So you've got to make sure that it's all PG related um, and all that sort of stuff. And also don't post any like coronavirus games in because we don't want to, everyone's talking about that everywhere else. We want to like not talk about it here. We want to just chill out and make cool games and not worry about what's happening. You know, that's like, getting everyone all stressed and upset. So make sure that everything that you post inside the Futures Lab Coda Dojo studio is positive and PG rated um, and make sure that you're also really nice to everyone else. Uh, don't leave any really mean comments or anything like that. Otherwise, I will remove you as a curator, okay? So, uh, okay, so let's add Charles, let's add yo yo cakes, let's add infamous and inches. All right, so you should have been invited and you should be able to put projects inside Futures Lab Coda Dojo now. Oh, very nice. Cool Trish has already got hers in. Let's have a play. Oh, I like the balloons. Okay, very good, very good. This is actually a really nice amount of like changed size as well. Like that looks really satisfying the way that that's like, that button's kind of changing. 
and lovely. Lovely, very nice. Very nice indeed. Cool, cool. All right, well, that is everything, guys. Um, so I will post this video to um, uh, YouTube. Um, so uh, you can like and uh, the video if you want, and you can leave comments with the game that you made if you want. In the, uh, it'll take a few while. It, ta it takes a little while for the live stream to become a YouTube video. Um, so come back in like a little while, and you can post like, oh, here's my here's my games, here's my scratch account. You can put all that in the in the comments if you like. Um, I will post um, in the comments. Um, the original, the one that I made, so you guys can still find that if you need to check anything on, on the code. Um, uh, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, which makes me sound like a horrendous YouTuber, but I have to say it anyway, because if you do, and if you ring the bell, oh God, even worse, uh, then YouTube will let you know when we're doing new live streams. Uh, so we're doing another one tomorrow at 3.30, um, and that one, is, oh goodness, what is it? It's not platformer, because I think we're doing a platformer on Thursday. Tomorrow, we are doing, oh, I've forgotten. But if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, I'll put the live stream up probably tomorrow morning, and you'll see it then, okay? So we do, um, we do, all right, did you add all your games, Charles? I hope not all of them, because remember, we've got to try and keep this PG and like positive and everything. So have a look, make sure all of the games you added into there are, uh, are like appropriate. And also try and keep the games that you put in there like the cream of the crop, like all the really good ones, and, and or also the games that you made in these live streams. Um, okay. So, yeah, we'll continue doing these streams Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays at 3.30. So tune in anytime you like to do some, uh, to do some coding. Um, uh, if you have any problems, uh, leave me a comment on the YouTube video. Um, and, um, like, I didn't get a chance to uh, find... Um, uh, treasure cow. So treasure cow, um, leave me a comment in the YouTube video, um, and I'll see. I'll see if I can. I'll have one more look. Um, I'll see if I can. No, I already looked. Um, I'll see if I can have a look at your game. See if I can find it and uh, fix it for you. So until tomorrow. Stay awesome, be cool to each other, uh, take care of yourselves, and we shall see you next time, ninjas.